with 100% and that's all you focus on, you'll end up like Erwan Marshall. Yeah. A bunch of crazy different things will spread out. When I started doing this, um, I just used it. It's a 100% is a neck crank that exposes your opponent's back. So I would just use the neck crank just to get him to escape and expose his back. After a while, after faking that neck crank so much, I actually got really good at the neck crank. So I tapped people with the neck crank. I never really, I thought it was a strong man move. That's why I never really, I mean, there was a submission there, but I was just threatening with it just as a setup to get the back. But it's a, it's a serious uh, submission, and Erwan is taking it to all new levels. He's, he's got all these different angles and tweaks, making me want to go back to it. I, I rarely stay on one thing. The, the, usually like the, the Gogo Plata, for instance. I was in Gogo Platas for days. And then, you know, after a while, I just want to just keep, keep that rubber guard flowing. And guys got better at defending uh, Gogo Plata. So you gotta, my, my whole mission is to make um, the rubber guard as powerful as possible. So I'm always looking for new things. Sean Bollinger added double bagger. Fucking huge to the game, and um, Shigeki and Edwin focused on Gogo Blackas. That's all they did, and they took the Gogo Blackas to a whole new level. I'm going back, seeing what the hell they discovered, asking them for tips. Same thing with the hundred percent. When I first, when I first did the hundred percent, uh, I was going with the guy John Josh. I was a purple belt, and when I would hold him in my guard, he would just. Go double unders here, and he would just stuff his head. Not just stuff. He was just all he was doing was trying to stop my rubber guard. He wasn't doing anything. So I, he would put his head on the side. So I would take my arm underneath, and eventually get to this position. And once I was here, the first time I did that, I didn't know what the hell I was doing. I just knew that I had such good control here that he was going this way 100%. What I did with it, who knows what percent that is. But for sure, he's going over. This is so powerful here. I, I took him over. I ended up on top here. He escaped his left arm. And then he went right into back control. And I was like, wow, that was pretty nice. I wonder if that was a fluke. I didn't really think about it. So I tried it again. We rolled again. Same thing. I put him in the car. He's burying his head. I got his arm in nice and deep. I took him over again. Stuffed him here. He escaped his left arm, and then I took his back. Or two times. Kept rolling. Third time, same thing. Over. Took his back. And then from that point on, it just stuck. And I was stuck on that for a while. I kept doing that over and over again. Um, it's, once your opponents know that's your move from full guard, they're going to keep their head up now. They're going to pass you know, fuck out there in the head. Down. Not going to do it. So, it didn't come up for a while until. So, um, get out of back. From half guard, this was the most common position. We were all hunting for overhooks, and, wait, or underhooks rather, in half guard. And when you would whip up, anytime someone would be on their elbows here, I thought, oh, here it is again. But I'm not on my back. I'm in half guard. If I'm going to take his back, my left leg has got to hook his left leg. My left leg ain't hooking shit right now. My right leg is caught. So it was a weird thing that I had to figure out from here. How can, it's still the same hole. How can we end up on his back? I'm on top. Do you really want to go to your back? I'm so confident in this. I didn't care going to my back. I know 100% he was going over. I just had to control his thing. His escape, when I take him over, his escape was untangling his legs and spinning in the Spin, spin in the Here we go. So, it's actually too powerful, this hole. If I did it as fast as I can in the middle, we can get on top. It would help. So it's so powerful, you gotta do it 50% power. And you gotta control his escape, his spin. Right? So, I'm on top, and I really wanna go on my back. If you're confident with this, I can go from being in his half guard to being on his back. So, from here, I got the.
I got the 100% in. I take them over, but I'm throwing my left leg, my right leg down, see I'm stopping them, and I'm staying here. Then, since I want to end up on his back, my left leg is going to do something. So now I'm going to put that leg in. Put that left leg in. And now, as soon as I switch the legs, I'm going to let him escape his left arm. His, his left arm should have been right here. As soon as I switch the legs, I let him escape. Bring the, bring the left arm back. He escapes his left arm. I get up on my knee, and then I shoot my knee into his back and pull him on top of him. And then I take his back. Put the anaconda. He's defending a little bit. Then we get, get a squeeze. Every squeeze, you do 100%. Because one squeeze closer to Marcelo 2003. We know in 2003, Marcelo was... Amazing. He's probably he's way better now. But that rear naked choke he had in 2003, however many reps that was, that was probably 75,000 reps by 2003. Whatever it was. The first goal is to get to 2003 or so. So if you're on a dude's back, if you squeeze it 100%, you're one squeeze closer. If you're on a dude's back, you're like, okay, I could have got it. And then, how are you going to get closer to myself with that squeeze? First you gotta get to Marcel, then you gotta get to me. <laughs> Alright, so he's half guard with the underhook. He whips up to his elbow. If he's got double underhooks and he's squeezing them, there's no 100%, there's nothing. That's why I wanna, if I can battle and get those double underhooks, I'm gonna squeeze the shit out of them. Because you're safe. And now he's open. I can go darts on him here too. You have choices. You can go dark, you can go Japanese necktie on here. But we're working on 100%. This is nice and tight. Take him over, stop that roll, switch the hooks. As soon as I switch the hooks, he escapes. I get up on my knee, I'm going to shoot it through and bring him up on top. Depends on rear naked choke. So remember, when you hit that rear naked choke, if you can put the anaconda on him, squeeze that thing. Don't just leave it on. Use it as a weapon. Listen to him breathe when he exhales, that's when you go. Because if people put on the anaconda all the time, you can just tell it's loose. Now there's that's a weapon right there. I, I, I hate going against guys who know it's a weapon. And they put the anaconda on me. That's, when someone has my back, I'm like, that's the one thing I'm stopping. I can deal with two hooks. I, I, I can deal with that. That anaconda, and they squeeze it hurt. He's going to whip up to his elbow, 100%. We take him over. No, he doesn't escape until we switch the hooks. And then, if you want to just finish him here, you can just finish him right here. Just drive in, drive the hips and don't let him escape. Don't leave any, any room. Or you let him escape, get up on your knee, and then shoot it through. Use them, you got 
to get a condom, use them. Alright? Got grab them, don't escape the arm until he switches the hooks. Take them over, and switch the hooks. 